Hello learners, I am R. Swarnalata, Assistant Professor from the Department of Management Sciences at PhD College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. I welcome you to the presentation on the last module of Strategic Management, which is on Strategy Evaluation. In this session, we will try to understand the meaning for Strategy Evaluation, process involved in it, strategic control, control techniques, Guidelines for Effective Control and Participants in Strategic Control. Stahl and Grigsby defines strategic evaluation and control as the process of evaluating strategic plans and monitoring organizational performance so that necessary corrective actions can be taken. It is essential that strategic managers systematically review, evaluate and control the properly implemented strategies. They should continuously monitor the effectiveness of these strategies to make sure that they are working at an optimum level and to make any necessary changes in a timely manner. Periodic evaluation of internal and external environment of an organization is necessary to make sure that the actual performance matches the desired performance. The evaluation of internal factors should primarily focus on analyzing their organizational strengths and weakness in terms of changes in management, marketing, finance, accounting, production, research and development, information systems and so on. The evaluation of external factors should focus on key threats and opportunities and analyze about competitors' reaction to implemented strategies, changes in political policies, government rules and regulations, customers' attitude, and so on. Some of the external factors that make the strategic evaluation process difficult are a dramatic increase in the environment's complexity, increasing difficulty in predicting the future with accuracy, increasing number of variables impacting the business environment, rapid rate at which the plans and strategies become obsolete and increase in the number of both domestic and global events affecting organizations and short time frame required to predict the impact of these events. In spite of these obstacles, strategies have to be evaluated on a continuous basis in order to make any changes that may be necessary consistent with the changes in the environment. Richard Rumelt suggests four criteria that could be used to evaluate the strategy. They are consonance, competitive advantage, consistency and convenience. Strategic evaluation and strategic control should go hand in hand for success. Strategic control is the process by which managers monitor the ongoing activities of an organization and its members to evaluate whether activities are being performed efficiently and effectively to take over corrective action when necessary to improve the performance. It is a dynamic process requiring deliberate and purposeful actions in order to ensure compliance with the plans and policies developed previously. It is a special type of organizational control that focuses on monitoring and evaluating the strategic management process in order to make sure that it's functioning properly. Strategic control helps managers to obtain superior efficiency, quality, innovation and responsiveness to customers. Let's look into strategic control process. Strategic control is concerned with that aspect of strategic management through which an organization ensures that it's achieving its objectives as envisioned in the strategic action. If it's not, it paves way for suggesting corrective actions to achieve the organizational objectives. Robert Mockler 
defines strategic management control process as a systematic effort to set standards with planning objectives, to design information feedback systems, to compare actual performance with these predetermined standards, to determine whether there are any deviations and to measure their significance and to take any action required to assure that all corporate resources are being used in the most effective way possible in achieving corporate objectives. Strategic control involves the monitoring and evaluation of plans, activities and results with a view towards future action, providing a warning signal through diagnosis of data and triggering appropriate measures through tactical adjustments or strategic reorientation. Mockler's definition divides the process of control into six clear steps. They are establishment of specific performance standards, measurement of organizational performance, selection of measuring techniques, comparing performance with standards, evaluation of deviation and then taking corrective action. Let's now deal with each step in detail. To begin with, let's start with establishment of specific performance standards. The first step in strategic control process is developing standards of performance against which organizational activities can be compared. The standards must be clearly specified and understood by all organizational members. They should be defined in measurable terms wherever possible such as physical units produced per unit and so on. There are situations where it's not possible to quantify standards such as the case of high morale, community relations, discipline or creativity. In such cases all efforts should be made to fully understand these qualitative goals and design control mechanisms that would be useful in measuring performance in these situations. Most of these control mechanisms would be subjective in nature and decisions would be made on the basis of experience, analytical observations and intuitive judgments. Some of the quantitative standards against which the performance can be measured are time standards, cost standards, income standards, market share standards, quality standards, productivity standards, return on investment and quantitative personal standards. Now coming to the second step in strategic control process, it is measuring the organizational performance. Once the goals and standards have been established, the second step in the control process is to monitor and measure the actual performance in the areas so specified. Monitoring and measuring is a continuous activity and involves collection of relevant data that represent the actual performance level of the given activity so that a comparison can be made between what is accomplished and what was intended to be accomplished. The units of measurement of performance should be well defined easily identified and should be clearly communicated to all organizational members. According to such man, there are five types of evaluation. Evaluation of effort, evaluation of effectiveness, evaluation of adequacy, evaluation of efficiency and evaluation of process. Evaluation of effort. Effort reveals the extent of input and the idea is to measure such input to see if it's adequate in meeting the set objectives. Evaluation of effectiveness is to see that the evaluation of input elements in the delivery of performance conveys the degree of effectiveness and results. Evaluation of adequacy is the ratio of output to the need and is a useful measure if the need and output can be clearly identified and related. If the needs are satisfied, then the performance can be considered as adequate. 
evaluation of efficiency relates output to input and lastly the evaluation of process it relates to underlying processes which convert effort into outcome or input into output it treats output as a function of input so that the focus is on the evaluation of mechanisms that converts the effort into results rather than the effort itself the third step in strategic control process is the selection of the measuring techniques one of the most difficult task in measuring the actual performance is the selection of an appropriate measure the choice of the appropriate measuring technique depends on the performance factor to be measured some of the measuring techniques for various performance areas are in financial measures we use ratios like net sales to working capital net sales to inventory current ratio net profit to net sales net profit to tangible net worth net profit to net working capital and collection period on credit sales coming to production measures there are many measures that can be used to evaluate the outcomes of activities related to the production function these broad categories of control standards and measure involve three types of control pre control concurrent control and post control pre control production measure is called feed forward control it involves evaluating the inputs and taking corrective actions before a particular sequence of operation of an action is completed these controls serve the purpose of determining the quality of resource inputs these resources include capital human resources and materials input the second type of control is concurrent production control it's also called as real time or steering control or production scheduling as it involves evaluating the actions and taking corrective actions during the operation of a function it establishes quantity and time frame for the outputs some of the tools employed for production scheduling include various network models such as pert program evaluation and review technique and linear programming these controls are real time so that deviation can be detected and corrective action taken during the process of production rather than after the finished product is produced for example sensors or warning systems fitted into machinery can signal any deviation from the actual production process when detected for abnormal operations steps are taken to suspend the operation take corrective action and then to proceed with the regular production function coming to the third control measure it is post production control it is otherwise called operational or management control it can also be called as feedback control because it results in post control measure after completing the reactions the result of completed activity are compared with predetermined standards and if there are any deviations then corrective action can be taken for future activities this control focuses on analyzing the output for its quality and consistency with pre established standards there are two widely used techniques for post control one is standard cost analysis and it involves estimating and combining the direct labor direct materials and overhead cost to find the actual cost per unit this cost is then compared with the known standard unit cost in order to find any cost variance if there is any cost variance then the entire process can be analyzed to find out the root cause of such variance the second method is known as statistical quality control it uses statistical techniques aimed at detecting low quality or defective outputs after this let's look into what are all the marketing measures according to smith arnold and bizel there are five categories of marketing performance measures these are sales analysis market share analysis marketing expense to sales ratio 
customer attitude tracking and efficiency analysis. Now, the fourth step in strategic control process is to compare the performance with standards. The next step in control process is to compare the actual performance to the standards set for such performance. This comparison is less complicated if the measurement units for the standard set and for the performance measured are the same and are quantitative in nature. The comparison of performance with standards tells us if anything has gone wrong in the process of operations. If there is any deviation from the standards, negative or positive, and what must be undertaken as a restorative process for correcting such a deviation. So after comparing the performance with set standards, the next step is involved with evaluation of deviation. The root cause for the deviations are analyzed through a thorough investigation and the reason for deviations are studied. The final step involves taking corrective action. Once deviations are detected, decisions are to be taken for taking corrective actions promptly. Corrective actions can lead to changes in strategy formulation or implementation or both. These changes will rectify the weakness, strengthen the strategies leading to better performance in process, operations, efficiency and profits. Now, let's look into what are the barriers in strategic control. They are related to motivation problems. These are the result of lack of motivation among managers to implement the new formulated strategy. Two most important motivational problems are psychological barrier to accept the mistakes committed during the process of implementing the new strategy and lack of direct relationship between performance and rewards to the managers who have accomplished the implementation of the new strategy. The second problem is the operational problem. Any manager should have clarity with regard to all factors before implementing any strategy. Lack of clarity in the strategic task like understanding the strategic objectives, determination of evaluation criteria, establishment of performance measurement standards and taking corrective actions if needed any may hinder the process of strategy implementation. So what are the control techniques available to set it right? The first technique is the premise control. What are premises? Premises are the anticipated forecast or predictions made in the business environment in which a strategy is expected to operate. It is designed to check systematically and continuously whether or not the premises set during strategy formulation and implementation process are still valid and they remain the same without much changes. The second controlling technique is the implementation control. Implementation control is designed to assess whether the overall strategy should be changed with regard to factors like projects, programs, resource allocation and so on in the firm when implementing the new strategy. The third technique involved in strategic control is the strategic surveillance. Strategic surveillance is a non-focused control designed to monitor a broad range of events inside and outside the organization that are likely to affect the new course of the strategy. It involves careful analysis of changes in the environmental and industry factors that may affect the course of implementing the new strategy. The fourth controlling technique is special alert control. Special alert control is undertaken to assess the impact of any major environmental event in the form of technological advancements that may lead to obsoleteness of existing technology, recession economy affecting the business prospects, stringent business rules and regulations imposed by the government for that particular industry and so on. So after looking into strategic control techniques, let's find out what are the characteristics of effective control. Controls at every level focus on inputs 
processes and outputs. It's very important to have effective controls at each of these three stages. Effective control systems tend to have certain common characteristics. They are, they need to have accuracy, timeliness, flexibility, acceptability, integration with value systems and policies, economic feasibility, strategic placement, corrective action, and emphasis on future development. What are the guidelines for effective control? In designing an effective control system, top management must understand that controls should follow strategy. Controls must be designed and applied to ensure that proper strategies are used in order to achieve the established goals and objectives. Some of the guidelines for establishing proper control are Controls should involve only the minimum amount of information. Too many controls create confusion and hence focus should be given to those factors which are critical towards achieving the goals. Controls should monitor only meaningful activities and results. Controls should be timely for taking corrective actions if any in advance. Control should aim at pinpointing exceptions and it should always result in positive actions. Having said about the guidelines for effective control, let's look at types of control system. There are four types of control system. Number one being the market control. Market control is based on comparison of one company with other in terms of stock market price and return on investment. The next control is output control. It is adopted by managers when market control is difficult to be evolved and system of comparison between divisions and units do not exist. In this type, the companies often estimate the suitable targets for divisions, departments and employees and monitor the performance against targets. The third type of control system is bureaucratic control. Bureaucratic control operates through a comprehensive system of rules and procedures to direct the activities of divisions, functions and individuals. It is to standardize the way to reach goals and develop accuracy. ISO 9000, activity based costing, balanced scorecard, management audits, responsibility centers, Benchmarking, enterprise resource planning, etc. are few tools used in bureaucratic control. The next component is organizational culture. What is organizational culture? It is the values, norms and beliefs which are shared by the members of the organization which influences the way in which organization operates its business. The board of directors, the chief executive officer, and other department managers at different levels have an equal role in maintaining the culture and leading the business. The success of the whole process of strategic evaluation and control process lies in establishing the needed information system, planning system, development system, appraisal system and motivation system by them. I believe this module has helped you to understand the concept of strategic evaluation process involved in it, strategic control, control techniques, guidelines for effective control and participants in strategic control. Hope you had a good learning experience. Thank you.